Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today I will be talking about QNVRAM, the quasi novelty RAM for uh, low overhead persistent enforcement in smartphones. I'm Halva from University of Nebraska, and the other two co authors of this paper are uh, Lei Tian and uh, Hong Zhang. So, no doubt that we are now in the mobile era. Uh, over the past decade, the mobile devices, including the smartphones and uh, tablets, have become ubiquitous. And uh, the latest smartphones are equipped with multi-core CPUs, large capacity, DRAM, and the flash storage. However, uh, the inefficiency of the I.O. stack in smartphones uh, has dragged the application performance. So uh, according to uh, several uh, recent studies, there are basically four major types of failures in smartphones. Uh, the application crash, uh, which indicates that your application uh, start, stops to work unexpectedly. And the application hang uh, refers to the fact that uh, your application is still active, but uh, delivering constant output uh, due to data lock or uh, get blocked in an infinite loop. And the self-reboot means uh, that the system forced a reboot uh, due to some severe uh, problems like uh, kernel panic. And the system freeze means uh, your smart you won't get any response from uh, your smartphone. So to make sure uh, the data uh, are updated in an atomic, uh, consistent, and durable manner uh, to against the aforementioned four failures, uh, redo or undo logs are uh, employed in different components inside the, uh, smart the inside the IO stack in smartphones. So here I will show you a uh, simple example how a uh, log works. So let's say when we update some uh, data, we first modify the data copy in memory. And when we commit the change to the flash storage, we will first write the modified uh, data, a prime to a log area, which can be a log file or uh, some uh, separated uh, log, uh, log area in raw device. And once the uh, a prime is secured in log area, we uh, write data back to the real data. So in order to update one data block, we have to write the data twice. And moreover, uh, some applications uh, tend to manage their own data in flat files. Uh, so when the application update this file, they will have to overwrite the whole file to make sure that the update is atomic. So for example, when the application tries to modify file full, it will write the whole content of new file to a, a temporary file called foo.temp. And once that is done, the application will rename the temporary file to foo. So this is actually similar to uh, logging. It will perform out of place update, but uh, this uh, is even more uh, inefficient because uh, it induces a lot of redundant write. Even unmodified parts had to be write to the uh, flash storage. So in this figure, I show some uh, data from real applications. So I collect IO traces from seven of the most popular uh, apps uh, from Google Play. So um, this bin chart uh, illustrate the destination of uh, uh, all these right IOs. Uh, the blue parts are the rights to the uh, real data. The green parts are the rights to the file system journals and the yellow parts are to the uh, database logs, and the, the red part are uh, the redundant write induced by uh, double write. As you can see, uh, only about one third of all the writes are to the real data, and all of the others are exclusively for uh, persistency enforcement. As you can see, in Chrome, uh, only 33% 30, of all the writes are to real data, and in Twitter, the number is even smaller, it's 22%. So obviously, the overhead of persistence enforcement is pretty high here. And uh, that's mostly because of the inefficiency of the IO stack. Um, and this will definitely hurt the performance. So, but why do we need logging? So why do we put ourselves through so much pain? That's because the memory is volatile. But have you noticed that Every smartphone has battery. So with the battery, uh, the power loss uh, 
it's actually very unlikely to happen, especially when more and more latest smartphones are shipped with irre irremovable batteries, like your iPhone or your latest Google Nexus phone. So uh, can the battery make the DRAM non-volatile in smartphones? So to answer that question, I will first talk about the memory volatility in smartphones from another angle, from the application's point of view. When the application crashes, uh, the application process is terminated. And when the application hangs, the user uh, would probably close the app by killing the process. Um, in other way, the data in the application's memory space is gone. The uh, memory is released by the operating system. And when the next time uh, the application restarts, it will try to recover the data. And it, at this time, it will get a clean address space, and it has to go to the flash storage to read the log from the flash storage and perform the uh, recovery, failure recovery. But actually, uh, the data before the crash, the page X, is still there. It's still in physical memory. It's so very likely that it's uh, unused in the physical memory. So, but we, have, we still have to go to the flash storage. This looks very inefficient to me. So what if uh, the application can retrieve the data from operating system? What if the application can ask the operating system for page X when it restarts? So this time, we probably won't need a log because we can get all the dirty data from the uh, operating system. We can uh, make sure that, that the uh, data we see are consistent, in consistent state. So when uh, the system reboots, uh, the operating system will restart. So when it restarts, the virtual uh, memory system will be reinitialized. So uh, in this case, everything in virtual memory are gone. However, the, the physical memory uh, over reboot, uh, the data in physical memory are still there over reboot because the physical memory doesn't lose power over reboot. But unfortunately, the operating system won't see it. And the operating system will get a brand new page table and we'll just treat all this uh, physical memory as uh, it's uh, uh, all zeros. So what if the data, the page X, let's say, is stored at a fixed uh, location? So that when we, rest when we re so after the reboot, we can still find the data in page X uh, using the fixed uh, physical location. So in this case, uh, the page X would look uh, non volatile to both the uh, operating system and the application because it, the content is still there even after I reboot the smartphone. So in the last failure mode, uh, when the uh, system frees, the, uh, the user won't get any response from the smartphone. And then if this happens, uh, the user would probably uh, start some user initialized uh, recovery, like how to reset the phone or uh, force power, powering off the phone. So uh, for uh, Android smartphones, if you press the power button for around 10 seconds, uh, your phone will be com completely shut down. So everything in DRAM is lost in this case. But what if uh, the operating system can flash the important data to flash storage when the user starts, uh, tries to force powering off the phone. Because, uh, the time, because we have a long enough time window to flush some very important data, uh, like the data uh, important to the transaction. Uh, we can flush that data to the flash storage. And when the next time we restart, we can read it from the flash storage, which, uh, basically make the, uh, which can basically preserve the data. So this is very similar to a uh, battery-backed DIMM. So when the system loses power, we flush the data to flash storage. And the next time we restart, we read it from the flash storage. OK, uh, this table summarizes uh, 
what happened to uh, memory data when uh, failure happens? Uh, when, when the application fails, we lose data in the application's memory space. And when the, uh, when the system reboots, we lose uh, everything in the virtual memory system. But the data in the physical memory is still there. And when the system hands, we uh, basically lose everything. So based on the above rethinks, uh, we propose a new design of uh, non-volatile RAM in uh, smartphones, uh, the quasi non-volatile RAM. Uh, it's implemented as a set of uh, softwares, uh, a user library and a kernel module. Um, it, uh, the the QMV RAM requires no extra hardware, uh, uh, and we call it quasi non-volatile because <laughs> it's not 100% uh, volatile. Uh, there are certain cases uh, which are very rare um, we uh, we still lose data. So uh, in the, the QMV RAM library implements very easy to use APIs for the application to uh, uh, allocate free and retrieve data. So the application can uh, allocate and free a piece of QMV RAM um, during normal execution and retrieve the data when uh, failure happens upon uh, failure recovery. And the kernel module uh, manages a small chunk of physical memory. Uh, the physical memory is reserved at uh, when the system uh, boots up so that the virtual memory system won't see it. So, uh, and the physical memory is uh, lo located at the fixed physical address so that we can uh, find it uh, even after reboot. And the kernel module is also uh, responsible for uh, emergency flush uh, so that uh, when the user tries to uh, uh, power of the phone, uh, the data will be flashed to flash storage. Uh, for now, we only reserve like 20 megabytes of uh, physical memory uh, because we found that the, the page cache used by uh, SQLite to uh, enforce persistency is uh, really very small, and 20 megabytes is uh, actually enough for uh, most of the applications. So next, I will show you a case study of uh, QMV RAM. We implement a persistent page cache in SQLite uh, to perform in-place update. So uh, we, in this case, uh, in the persistent page cache, we don't need uh, uh, redo log or endo log anymore. So uh, when we make changes to the database, we perform the update in place. And if uh, something happens here, uh, let's say the system crashed at this point, uh, we can recover from the persistent page cache because the data is still there. So when, when the next time the uh, application restarts, uh, it will use the retrieve function to get the data back from the QMV RAM and flash the dirty page to the uh, table file so that the database is in consistent state. Uh, so in this figure, I show some uh, show the performance comparison between uh, persistent page cache and uh, the baseline right ahead log uh, in uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy S4 uh, smartphone. Uh, uh, it's pretty recent model. Um, as you can see in this figure, uh, the page uh, the persistent page cache outperforms the right ahead log uh, by two times in all uh, operations: the insert, update, and the delete. And in this figures, I show the uh, block IO pattern of uh, Red Hat log and the persistent page cache. So as you can see here, uh, the persistent page cache eliminates all of the database log IOs and almost all of the uh, ext4 journal IOs. So which means uh, the journal of journal anomaly is uh, resolved automatically by the persistent page cache. But so far, we haven't unleashed the full potential of uh, the QMV RAM because uh, uh, in persistent page cache, we still have to write uh, data to the flash storage uh, upon every commit. So actually, we can do uh, we can be more lazy. So we flash the uh, dirty pages in persistent page cache only when there are enough dirty pages. So. Uh, 
as you can see in this figure, when we, when we uh, update uh, block A and commit the changes, we don't issue uh, the, fl the flash. And when we update block B and commit, at this time we have enough dirty pages in precision page cache and we flush them together to the uh, file system, to the flash storage. So uh, the latest flash can uh, take advantage of uh, the, high, uh, the high sequential bandwidth of the uh, flash storage in smartphones. So here I show the performance uh, between uh, lazy slash and the precision page cache and the baseline red hat log. Uh, it turns out that uh, the lazy flash uh, can significantly boost the performance. Um, the reason is because uh, in the right I.O. to the flash storage, uh, the locality is actually very high. So basically all these repeated writes can be absorbed by the uh, persistent page cache. So here are the uh, block IO patterns of the insert operation uh, for uh, lazy flash, when lazy flash is in enabled. So here you can see that the lazy flash writes much less data to the flash storage than the persistent page cache. Because whenever you, uh, for example, in the SQLite, whenever you update uh, a record, you have to modify the first, uh, the, uh, first block in the table files to update the change counter. So that kind of repeated write can be uh, absorbed by the persistent page cache. So to, uh, to conclude, the QMVRAM uh, takes advantage of the battery-backed uh, characteristics of uh, mobile devices. So there is uh, absolutely no extra hardware needed. And uh, we rethink the uh, memory volatility from another angle, from the application's point of view, and we propose, uh, uh, and uh, um, we make the RAM quasi non volatile. So uh, with QMV RAM, uh, the SQLite can get rid of uh, the database journal links and resolve the journal of journal anomaly. And uh, uh, the performance results show that the QMV RAM can speed up uh, SQLite up to 16 times. And uh, uh, in a future work, I, I will. Uh, Think more, uh, do more work on how to make this uh, reliable and do more case studies on this QMB RAM. Uh, thank you all, and I'm, I'm open for questions. All right, so Wen from Fermilab, uh, very good work. I'm just curious, because for your application crash or system reboot, and how to ensure the data integrity in this case, is this important or is it not an issue? Thank you. Sorry, you mean uh, when when the system reboots and uh, when the system reboot and uh, and what? And the application hand because your old data you live in the cache and then you, because the battery support the, the cache and the, is the integrity is a problem or data no, integrity? No, this will guarantee the uh, integrity in this case is because when the system reboot uh, the QMRAM is basically a chunk of physical memory. We reserve that uh, memory at uh, the system boot time. So when the system reboots, we can still find the data because the DRAM doesn't no, no, lose I, power. I, yeah, I understand the point. Because uh, your, your, your application crash or yes. your system application hands, does that before the application crash or something, will it do some bad things on your memory and then the, how you ensure your data integrity? Um, Is that an issue or not? Yes, I think, it, uh, I'm pretty sure that the data will still be there, and the integrity uh, of the data is not a problem, because uh, um, when the application crashes, the data in the physical memory is not lost, right? It's not lost, but what could some ha something happen to the integrity? Mm, no, I just, I don't know, I just ask. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, I don't think the integrity is a problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, Xiaozong Ma from QCRI, a very interesting work. Um, so is it correct that your theme is because we have battery in our mobile phones, so we can do things in a more optimistic way compared to traditional systems? Yes. So if that is the case, um, beyond 
uh, speeding up applications. For example, can we also save a lot of energy and making battery last longer? Did you do any evaluation? Yes, very that? good question. So I've already thought about that. So basically, uh, this can help uh, reduce the power consumption of the smartphone. Because for now, uh, these IOs are all small IOs, and it takes a long time. So if we can like batch all these writes and write them to the flash uh, at one time, then we can save CPU cycles. We can uh, also, uh, so we can basically save CPU cycles, and uh, uh, it will re it will also reduce the power consumption of the encryption, because for now, the if we issue uh, if we encrypt uh, every small block of data, it will be very uh, it will consume a lot of power. But if if we uh, encrypt a large chunk of data, it will be more uh, energy efficient. Uh, Michael Condit, that app. Um, I think I can ask the first questioner's question in a more specific way to make it clearer because I have the same question. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main reasons for an application or a system to crash is a wild pointer that do it doesn't point to what you think it points to and you, you write on it and then try to read back from it. Uh, what you might have written on is the, the memory that you are making persistent so that when you restore the application and it restores that memory, the memory is bad, it's, it's corrupt. Um, one of the things that you always have to worry about is if when you make uh, computer systems more persistent, errors that used to be volatile are now persistent as well. Okay, so, thank, you for, uh, thank you for uh, uh, making it clear. So uh, to answer your question, so this, my work, uh, it's uh, primarily for uh, the persistency enforcement in the smartphones. So it's not, act, it's not used as, uh, directly as the persistent memory. So we use it more like a write buffer or a page cache to uh, enforce the persistency. So when the write to the flash storage fails, we can still find the data copy in the memory. So in this case, we manage the uh, persistent, uh, the QMRM more like a uh, block device. So does that answer your question? Mike Chin from University of Toronto. I was just curious if, say, let's say a kernel panics, so your system hounds, and you don't guarantee data integrity, right? Um, so after a reboot, w how much damage does it cost? Is it just the app doesn't work, or the whole smartphone just doesn't work? Um, so again, uh, the QRA is primarily for uh, persistence enforcement. So you manage the RAM like a red cache. So like it, just like in SQLite, it, it has its own like. Ra ra page cache. So whenever it modify a data, it will uh, modify the data in the page cache. And it's managed more like a block device. But the, the, the flushing back of buffer cache and the storage is atomic. Yes. Um, in your case, if a kernel panic, it doesn't guarantee data integrity, which means it's not atomic anymore. I'm asking if, if that happened, the worst case happened, how much damage does it cost? Oh, I don't think there is any damage because we can still find the data, right? The, the, the 30 page in the memory is still there. And uh, we know that it has not been written to the flash storage. And we can basically flash that. Let's page. say let's say the battery is dead. Like there is no battery at all. OK. When the system has. Right? So when battery is dead, that's a different story. So when the battery is low, the smartphones, the iPhone and the Android phones will. Right, so how much damage does it cost? No, so there's. Losing your whole smartphone because your battery died. Oh, uh, because the battery died. So yeah. before the battery died, when the battery is low. After the battery died, are you losing your whole smartphone? Yes or no? <laughs> uh, no. No. Okay, I see. Let's talk offline. Okay. Peter Desnoyers, Northeastern. Um, it, it is interesting to see that, you know, as the trend goes towards devices with batteries that don't pop out when you drop them, that totally changes the you know, the failure mode, um, at the same time, you do have, you know, a vast population of devices where, you know, the, the predominant failure mode is, in fact, sudden power failure. You know, in other words, if I go like this, there's, it's, this one's still running, my previous one wouldn't have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, so Thanks. you have something where you've got a population of devices where, you know, half of them you can use this method, and the other half, which unfortunately typically have slower storage with higher latency, right. uh, don't. Um, I mean, have, I wonder had you thought, for instance, about 
what a secondary battery for memory yeah, backup yeah. would involve or something like that. Yeah, so it looks like the, uh, all of you are worried about the dead battery. So uh, if, if the sudden power loss happens, uh, unfortunately, the QNRAM won't be able to handle that case. Right, right. Data will be lost. Yes, but uh, um, the assumption here is that the, that ha the possibility of that happening is very small. So uh, there, are, there has been several uh, recent studies on how your smartphone fail can support uh, my argument here. Okay. So these are the major failure modes in smartphones. And okay. the, the one you talk about, the sudden failure uh, loss, uh, that's very rare. So the whole um, point okay, behind this is, is uh, to trade the consistency in some very, very rare cases for a significant performance boost. Okay, I will say that the information I've gotten from the Android team as well as observation of you know many other people I know with smartphones is that the sudden power loss due to battery separation is a very real issue for many phones, so including Android ones. Okay. Hi, uh, Yujip Wan from Hunan University. Um, so are you assuming that um, page cache location of a uh, SQLite file is fixed? Uh, yes, we manage the page cache just like a, a block device, yes. And the uh, number of SQLite journal file yes. is dynamically changes yes. and is created and deleted and... Yes, you know, that, that's the default mode in the uh, SQLite. Right, then how can you make it known, the location of dynamically uh, created and deleted files on the page cache? How can you fix the location of those files in the page cache? Oh, this, uh, so the QRM is not used to store the journals. So okay. is that what you mean? You know, um, it looks that you are assuming that um, putting the SQLite journal files in the page cache. And no, 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 no. Isn't That's that not what, what I intend to do here. So we want to get rid of the journal files. Okay. So we use the QNRAM as the page cache in SQLite. So the SQLite can use, uh, so by default, the SQLite use malloc to uh, allocate the memory for a page cache, but we can modify that to use the QNRAM. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take it offline. Since there's a few minutes left, let me ask one question. Um, do you have a sense of how the, uh, the energy consumption grows with the size of the QNVRAM partition? And the reason I'm asking is I'm thinking of applications which are doing things like video editing and other kinds of um, modifications to data which, for which the 20 megabyte limit might not be a realistic yes. assessment. So yes, good question. So. Um, for application like uh, video recording, uh, probably uh, using QNRAM is not a good idea because the QNRAM is for, uh, especially for persistence enforcement and for, uh, especially for the uh, SQLite here in this case. But how do you selectively, I mean, it seems like this is like an OS level thing, right? Either it's there for all or for none. So are you saying that it is not a good idea to deploy as a OS level abstraction. How, how else do you manage it? Um, Something to think about. Maybe we can take this offline. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, we had a great set of questions for this talk. Let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>